Good morning, Team Grit. It is day eight, day eight in our 40-day challenge. Do you know what that means? What that means is that we're in our second week. We're in our second week. Can you believe it? That's right. So you should be able to look back over the past seven days and say, wow, there was a lot of things that I had to, to navigate. I had to learn how to practice three habits. I had to, to learn to put myself into that stream of God's uh, means of grace and working in my life. There's things that I had to, uh, again, train and practice, as well as face the testing and the challenges of the day. And how was I gonna adapt and overcome by God's grace? Remember the purpose of why we're doing this. Remember, it is out of a positive response to God's grace at work in you and me that we are seeking to train our body and soul in a way that respects God's design and lives for his glory by his grace that continues to work in us. And that is a great lead in to our reading today in our Habits of Grace. Uh, Mathis is going to walk us through chapter four, and it's entitled Bringing the Bible Home to Your Heart, which is AKA, by the way, um, application, application, application. You know, when uh, I study to, to preach a message, uh, it it was important for me to understand that the outcome of a good expositional message isn't just that I can share all the content that I've studied and download it, uh, because that would be a lecture. The whole point of us gathering together to hear God's word is that there would become a redemptive act going on, that God would renew our minds, that there would be transformation that takes place in our life. Uh, and we want to be able to see God's fingerprints in our life through those messages. So as you come, like today on Sunday, and you hear Pastor Jude as he shares God's word, it's not just a matter of outcome. I sat there and took in a whole bunch of information. It's important to do that because we have to have the knowledge of God's will. But it needs to translate into understanding as well as wisdom so that we have those principles by which we can now learn to live and navigate our life right? So just keep that in mind. When you come on a Sunday, that's really what it's about when we hear the message of God. It's to get God's truth into our minds, but that it doesn't just stay as facts. It moves and translates deep into our soul and begins to give shape. And that's what really Mathis is talking about, by the way, in our chapter. It's all about application, application, application. So he's going to answer this question. What effect should regular Bible intake, whether that's reading God's word or studying God's word or meditating on God's word, those, that, that regular Bible intake, what should it have as an effect on our hearts and lives? And how, this is it, how does that actually happen? So he's going to track through in a, in a very succinct chapter that topic of application. So you're going to want to dig into this because really this is a critical part uh, of our Bible intake as far as an outcome. Remember that as we come to the Bible, we need to understand that it was written for us. It was written for those people that were gone by and history gone by, but it was also written for us. But also remember, it wasn't written about us. It's not about us. It's about God. This is God's story. He is the creator. He is the sustainer. He is the savior. He is the king. And we enter into his story. It is not our story of which God enters into. It is God's story of which we have the privilege of entering into at this point in time in history. Okay, so Mathis uh, gives us some interesting um, entry points into scripture as we begin to reflect. And he gives us three so that we stay on track and we don't twist the scripture. He, and they're real simple. He says, you know, when, when we begin to dig into God's word, we're reading it in Bible intake. We want to start with the hearers themselves. What was God or originally wanting to communicate through the author of scripture or the authors to the original hearers? What were some of the circumstances, the context? Because in the midst of that context, Text, God was sharing this message specific as his revelation to them. So we want to understand that. And, and there's different ways of, of doing that. You can use, again, 
uh, a study Bible, like the ESV study Bible or the NIV uh, study Bible, as we, we heard at, at the Kaporis conference, uh, those are easy tools to be able to use. So I'd encourage you to, to maybe pick up a copy of that so you have that. But then you also want to relate that story and, or the truth of scripture or what, it, or what it is that you're reading to Jesus and his work. So you want to begin to say, okay, as I'm reading this to, and God is writing to those specific hearers in that point in time in history, there's a fallen condition focus. There, there's a re reason why God was speaking to them and, and how was he bringing redemption into their world? What was the message of the gospel that needed to be said to them? So we can then see how does Jesus um, relate to that passage of scripture and his cross, his, his completed work on the cross with through his death, burial, and resurrection. We wanna begin to see how does the gospel uh, come out of that text naturally, not trying to force something. Uh, and then lastly, we would then begin to say, how do we bring it home to us? And that's what this chapter is about. How do we bring it home? So the first two questions really help to give us some context in our Bible reading, whether that's uh, just uh, you know, uh, quickly reading over a passage and we reflect uh, through a quick study Bible note or, or studying uh, at specific times during the week and we dig into God's truth. Those first two questions relate to that. The third one, bringing it home, is where we get into the application, okay? And really, application is about shaping our souls. God wants us to see Christ formed in us. Actually, the Apostle Paul in Scripture has often said that it was his great desire and, and it was his burden that Christ would be formed in us. What does that mean? It means Christ-likeness. It means godliness. It means holiness. It means God's design. It means those those things that really the sin that has been broken in our, that has broken things up in our mind in our life. How we think, what our emotions are attached attached to, the choices that we want to make, the habits and patterns that are in our life. Um, they're usually often marked by three types of sin. It's either it's either missing the mark. Right, we we try to we try to go and, and we just fall short constantly. It's constantly overstepping. That's like a transgression. I'm constantly overstepping the line. I know this is where it's at, but I'm going to do it anyway. Or it's that twisted bent that's in us that just pulls us into a different direction. The sin is in us, and we that's why we need to preach the gospel to ourselves. We need to say, God, search me and know me, know my heart, see if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the life everlasting. And that's why we need application. But what is application? Mathis really gets into that. Because I think sometimes we want to come away from application, thinking it's a to-do list. Okay, what do I need to do now this week? And then what do I need to do next week? And while definitely there are, are things that God will burden us to do, is that really the heartbeat of uh, application? Or is it something deeper than that? And uh, I really believe it's about becoming a certain kind of person. And that's what Mathis gets at, by the way. So in your reading, you're going to come across a section entitled Specific Applications for Every Day. And it's a question mark. Specific applications for every day? He wants us to think about it. Are we, is application really building a to-do list of things I need to do, the top two, three things I need to do today? And that's what application is. So every day I'm coming and now I have to do. Or is it something else? Is it something deeper than that? Is application actually becoming a certain kind of person? And that's what I want you to answer in the comments below for today. I want you to read through, obviously, the full chapter, but go back to this section, which is entitled Specific Application for Every Day, and look for uh, the information that can help you answer this question. What is that certain kind of person that God wants me to become? What is that certain kind of person that God wants me to become? Now, don't just write a quick answer as far as just your gut right now. Go back to what Mathis is saying. See how he articulates the truth in teaching us and helping to counsel us forward and, and see what it is that Mathis is talking about here. I think if we come away with uh, uh, this concept that he's going to articulate here, it will help you and me as we navigate the people and circumstances and situations of our daily life. So dig into that. Don't lose sight of that. Okay, so as far as uh, uh, sort of a little highlight today, bringing home uh, the Bible to our hearts is really what it's talking about. Before you go, 
before you go, hit pause, before you go, or don't hit pause, I want you to continue to listen. Make sure you look for the weekend review. You've had seven days now to not only train, but also face testing. Don't lose that operational memory, the, those experiences. You wanna consolidate them. You wanna process and, and meditate on them for a little bit. You want to allow yourself to learn from them. And that's why I put together this tool take you a few minutes to go through. It's a weekend review. There are three steps to it. The first one is to look back. You wanna look back at this past seven days and you wanna say, okay, what went well? Be honest about, hey, these things went well and celebrate. What things were tricky? Be brutally honest. Say, this was tricky. Uh, and, and then you're gonna say, well, what can I do differently then this coming week? And I'm gonna have a courageous faith in God to believe that he will lead me and guide me to do those things. All right, so that's the first step, looking back. Now you're gonna look forward. You're going to say, what are the obstacles that could be coming up this week because of my calendar uh, uh, that I know, as well as the things that I've learned from step one? Uh, they may come up again in, in this week, and you wanna write those things down, and then what are you gonna do to overcome? And then lastly, it's step three, is what then are your next best steps? Seriously, don't just do that great exercise. What today do I need to do today uh, to set myself up for success? So I finish this, this seventh day well, as well as the eighth day tomorrow, and then the ninth day, and continue through this next week. So this weekend review is a great tool. Uh, and so you wanna look in the post. I actually have it posted, the weekend review. You can download it, or you can go on the left-hand side in the menu. You'll see files. You'll see a files uh, button. Click on that, and it lists all the different templates and guides that I've given. And one of them will say the weekend review guide. So that's uh, where you can get that. All right, guys, I am excited to uh, really wrap up this, this first week and, uh, and complete this week and enter into this new week with you. Uh, keep pressing on for God's grace at work in us to experience that and, and to continue to, to complete these three habits today in the comments below answer what kind of person what certain kind of person does God want me to become answer that question in the comments below all right guys uh, keep pressing on and go team grit <laughs>